There are a few questions that can set naval history enthusiasts into arguing with each other. An easy example is the ever-infamous, was Bismarck scuttled or sunk by battle damage? Another one, and the topic of this video, is what was the first aircraft carrier? One can assume this has an easy answer. HMS Argus, the first ship to have a full-length flight deck to operate wheeled aircraft. That is your typical answer, outside of some outliers. I will admit to being one of those outliers, mostly because I'm fond of HMS Furious. While not the most efficient of options, one can argue her as the first aircraft carrier. That is, the first ship that could launch, and technically land, her own aircraft. There are other arguments, but I will not be covering them in this video. As this is my birthday weekend, and I just wanted to get a quick video out to go with the Sunday shipwreck video. With that disclaimer done, let's look at Furious first. Now, I have covered Furious a couple times at this point, both in a dedicated video of her own, and in the Weird and Wacky Conversion video. This is because Furious is a critical point in the development of aircraft carriers. As the British took a questionably designed battlecruiser, and began to do important experiments with her. The first of these was fitting a flying off platform to her bow, in place of her forward gun turret. This isn't too dissimilar from some of the seaplane tender conversions around the same time. In fact, in this guise, Furious was intended to fly her planes off and have them be picked up by other ships so that she could keep up with the fleet. However, one brave pilot changed this. Edwin Dunning, the commander of her flight group, saw the potential in Furious. While her flying off deck was not at all designed for landings, he did it anyway. On August 2nd, 1917, Dunning would be the first man to land aboard a moving ship. It was a risky thing, requiring the crew to be prompt in swarming his plane to hold it down. But it worked, and proved that it was possible for a ship to both launch and land aircraft while underway. Unfortunately, Dunning would eventually die in the attempt to replicate his feat. Nonetheless, it did convince the British Admiralty of the viability of the concept. Furious was pulled in for a second conversion that saw her fitted with an aft landing deck and hangar. The intention was to have her original flying off deck launch aircraft, which could then land on the aft deck. And while most attempts to do so were dismal failures, a handful did succeed. The dangers of Furious's conversion meant that she largely operated as a takeoff only carrier, but at the same time, if you go by the classic definition of an aircraft carrier, I would say she counts. Furious was the first ship that was capable of both launching and landing her own aircraft. While she would only do the latter in an experimental fashion, it was still something the ship was technically capable of. So, by that definition, you could say HMS Furious is the first aircraft carrier. However, an argument can also be made that she doesn't count. Furious did, after all, operate mostly as a launch platform. And with her superstructure in the middle of her deck, she was by no definition a full-length flight deck. That kept her from properly operating as a takeoff and landing aircraft carrier, even though she was fully capable of it. If you were brave enough. Bearing that in mind, let's look at the usual answer for first aircraft carrier in HMS Argus. The British continue to be trailblazers here. In late 1918, just before the end of the Great War, the Royal Navy finished the conversion of an Italian ocean liner. This ship, finished in September 1918, was HMS Argus. Argus went through a messy design and construction process. Delays and design changes kept her from completing in time to serve during the war. The ship that came out was a simple one, with a completely flush deck and a slow 20 knot top speed. Argus certainly doesn't resemble a modern aircraft carrier, or even a World War II design, other than in the broadest possible sense. For all of that though, Argus can certainly lay claim to being the first proper aircraft carrier. With her full-length flight deck, the carrier could land planes just as easily as she launched them. Argus wasn't limited to launching planes and having them recovered from the sea. It was still dangerous in those early days to land on her. 
but it wasn't because the ship was going to kill you with dangerous updrafts or similar things. Similarly, her capacity of roughly 20 aircraft was leagues better than seaplane tenders that could only carry 10 or less. It was probably superior to Furious as well in terms of operating those aircraft. With all of this in mind, Argus is where you will most often see the claim of first aircraft carrier. With admittedly good reason, as she pioneered just about everything that a traditional aircraft carrier could do. Argus even had a mock-up island installed at one point to test out how that worked. So, if you want the easy answer, Argus is the one to go to. Personally, I'm still fond of Furious myself. That said, as this video comes to an end, I will admit this is a largely academic distinction. Argus or Furious, it doesn't really make much difference, as both were British ships, and both were put in service within a couple years of each other. These were the first two ships that could launch, and more importantly land, aircraft. Before Furious, even with her very real design issues, ships could only launch aircraft. A true aircraft carrier, in my mind, is a ship that can carry, launch, and land her own aircraft. Whether you fall on the side of Furious or Argus here really depends on one factor. And that's if you consider Argus to be the better example, because she could land her aircraft without issue on her full-length flight deck. Either way, the crown does go to the Royal Navy regardless. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.